Mithras has an excellent combat system and I noticed that my previous video needed a better example to demonstrate those rules in actions. If you would like me to create any further videos like this for specific situations then do let me know in the comments below. Okay weapons at the ready let's dive straight in. For this example of combat we're going to have a goblin attacking one of my favorite characters ever. Well technically he's an NPC Ulrich. Ulrich is actually a mystic but he's not going to be using any of his powers in this combat just his faithful axe and shield. He has an 82% combat skill and has three actions per round. This is higher than most characters start off with but I wanted to try and show you a complete range of actions. He's fighting uh, against a goblin who has a combat skill of 56% and is armed with a short spear and only has two action points. The combat starts with everybody in range ready to fight. I'll make another video talking about changing range and movement in combat. Okay, so combat always starts with all parties rolling initiative. This is essentially 1d10 plus their initiative modifiers. The goblin gets 13 and will be going first since it's higher than Ulrich's roll of 12. Okay then, so round one, turn one. The goblin attacks first and rolls a 53, a hit. Ulrich elects to parry this attack with his shield and rolls a 60%. That's a success. Comparing the attack and parry with the table on page 95 of the core rulebook, Ulrich's shield is huge and so will parry all the damage from the goblin's medium weapon. Okay then, so there's a clan of metal on metal as Ulrich deflects the point of the goblin's spear. So now it's time for Ulrich to fight. He swings his axe and gets a 13. That's very close to it being a critical. The goblin, who of course only has one action left, quite wisely decides to try and parry the axe. However, he rolls an 81, a definite fail. There is one level of difference between the two rolls. Ulrich succeeded and the goblin failed and there's a table on page 51 if you want to have a look at that before we go on. So when a hit is successful the player or the opponent has to give the special first then the hit location then the damage. So Ulrich's going to opt to use a bleed special. He rolls a 1d20 to get the hit location, getting a 10, meaning that the goblin takes the axe hit square in the chest. Rolling for damage, Ulrich gets a rather disappointing three. Now, the goblin had what or has one point of armor on his chest, which will reduce the damage from three to two. He has six points in his chest, so it's he will suffer a minor wound, um, taking his hit points in his chest down to four. But remember, there is still the bleed effect to check. Now, for bleed special, the opponent needs to roll a, an opposed test with their endurance compared to the um, opponent's original combat roll. And if it's if it fails, then every round after that, they will gain a level of fatigue. OK, then. So the goblin needs to roll an endurance check to try to beat Ulrich's original roll. OK, but the goblin rolls a 33, which is greater than Ulrich's original roll of 13. And the goblin resists the bleed effect. Yeah, the goblin might actually have a chance here. As the first combat turn comes to the end, Ulrich seems to have the upper hand, but the goblin is hanging on in there. 
OK, so the fight now progresses to turn two of the first combat round. Now, the goblin would be going first, but he has no action points left. He only has two and he used the first one to attack and the second one to parry. Uh, and so we move straight on to Ulrich. Ulrich still has one action point left. He used one to parry and one to attack. Um, so with him having three action points, he has one left over. And he, you can probably imagine the grin he has on his face in combat as he realises this and raises his axe for another strike. He rolls an 87, a miss. And the goblin lets out a gasp of breath as Ulrich's axe swings over the goblin's head. OK, then. So nobody has any action points left. So the first round now ends and we move on to combat round two, turn one. So every body's action points are replenished and the goblin still goes first and stabs his spear at Ulrich. The goblin gets a one, a critical hit. Ulrich needs to parry this in order to prevent some nasty damage coming his way. Ulrich makes his shield parry with a 24. Phew. But wait. The goblin gained a critical hit this time. So consulting the table on 51, Ulrich's parry is not enough to stop the spear. Plus, the goblin has one level of success, so he will have a special, which can be a critical. The goblin can see that Ulrich is wearing heavy armour, so decides to use a com critical combat special called Bypass Armour. He rolls a hit location and gets a 9 right into Elric's abdomen. Ulrich has 5 points of armour there, but this will be negated due to the critical combat special that the goblin is using. The goblin rolls a, th a 3 for damage and Ulrich feels the goblin's spear slice into his flesh. He has six points in that hit location so the spear attack takes it down to three, a minor wound. Ulrich is not at all happy and glad that it is his turn to fight back. So Ulrich swings his axe and gets a 70, a hit. The goblin tries to parry the incoming axe with his spear, but rolls a 100% a fumble. Time for Ulrich to grin now. Now, because the goblin has fumbled and Ulrich was successful, Ulrich actually has two levels of success, which means he can apply two specials to his roll. Although his first, his attack was not uh, critical, so he cannot use any critical combat specials. He really would have liked to use maximum damage, but this is only available if the roll is a critical. So he decides to use choose location, electing to hit the goblin's head and press advantage. Now, press advantage means that the goblin will not be able to make an attack the next turn. He can only parry or take defensive actions. Ulrich doesn't need to roll for hit location because he already chose the choose location combat um, special aiming for the goblin's head. He swings his mighty axe and rolls a seven damage right on the goblin's head. Now, the goblin only has one point of armour in that location, so the damage will be reduced to six points. But the goblin only has four hit points on his head, so the mighty axe blow will take the hits in that location down to minus two, a serious wound. Now, whenever anybody takes a serious wound, there are certain effects that come into play. 
So the first thing is the goblin will not be able to attack for the next 1d3 turns. A tool a two is rolled, so added to the press advantage special that Ulrich used beforehand, this means that the goblin will only be able to defend for the next three turns. Imagine somebody powering down blow after blow onto the opponent, then all they can possibly do is try to parry it or evade it. But... A serious wound requires the goblin to make an opposed endurance check against Ulrich's original attack. The goblin, uh, the original attack was 70%. The goblin rolls 48%, which is close to its endurance of 44, but is still a fail. The goblin falls unconscious to the floor for six whole minutes. The number of minutes is equal to the damage done. As the goblin falls, Ulrich kneel, kneels over the unconscious body, says a short incantation committing the goblin's soul to Ulrich's master, Lord Vex, and using a dagger with a smooth black blade, slits the goblin's throat. As he rises, he winces with pain from the minor wound he suffered. Some first aid skills should fix that the next time he decides to take his armour off. I hope that gave a bit of an example how combat works. And like I said, if you would like me to do something similar with any situation, please add the situations in the comments below. If you have found this or any of my videos on the channel helpful or entertaining, then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. And if you would like to provide further support, then please consider using the super thanks button or becoming a supporter of the channel. If you are a supporter, it will give you early access to all the videos and ex an exclusive monthly video where I discuss my ideas and tasks for the future. Also remember that you can find adventures, encounters and blog posts over on my Ko-fi page. The link's in the description. Until next time, I hope all your opposed worlds are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Thanks for listening, everyone. See ya. Bye.